This video will show you how to compare the size of the product to the size of the factors. The first problem we want to look at has three parts, 4 fourths times 1 third, 3 fourths times 1 third, and 5 fourths times 1 third. Take a moment, solve those, and then we'll move on. When we lay out the problem like this, we can look at it and notice that I have all the th thirds lined up and all the different factors here lined up. And then I solve them across. 4 fourths times 1 third is 4 twelfths. 3 fourths times 1 third is 3 twelfths. And 5 fourths times 1 third is 5 twelfths. Now, if we look at this, we can, again, look and see that 1 third does not change at all. However, the other factor does. When we have 4 fourths and we simplify that, we have 1. That's our fractional 1. And just by looking at the first number and seeing that the second number doesn't change, we can see that 3 fourths of 1 third has to be smaller than 4 fourths. We're using 4 fourths as a point of reference because we can use 1 as a point of reference. And then we also know that 5 fourths is going to be the greatest of these three because 5 fourths is greater than 1 when we simplify it. We would have 1 and 1 fourth. So if I were to move these around, we would have 3 fourths is the least, 4 fourths is in the middle, and 5 fourths is the greatest going from least to greatest. And we want to get to the point where you can just look at a problem and say, okay, I know this is going to be the least, I know this is going to be in the middle, and this is going to be the greatest, so that we can reason what the other solutions are going to be and check our answers for reasonableness. Try that with these three problems. One-half times five-fifths, one-half times three-fifths, and one-half times nine-fifths. Solve all three and make sure that they are in the correct order. Now before, I'm solve this, before I solve this problem, I'm looking at it, and I'm going to look at the part that doesn't change and say, okay, I can ignore that for now. And then I'll look at the other side and see, okay, which is 1 and which is going to be greater than 1 and which is going to be less than 1. And when I do that, I see that 3 fifths is going to be the least, so that's going to be first, then 5 fifths, and then 9 fifths. And I can order that before I even solve it. And then when I do solve it, I see that 1 half times 3 fifths is 3 tenths, 1 half times 5 fifths is 5 tenths, and 1 half times 9 fifths is 9 tenths. And I already have that in order. Try one more problem. At the book fair, Anatoly spends all of his money on new books. Pam spends two-thirds as much as Anatoly, and Eli spends five-thirds as much. Who spent the most and who spent the least? I would like you to try drawing a picture with this problem, as well as solving the fractions, and I'll show you how I would draw a picture for this. When I drew a picture to solve this problem, I started with Anatoly. And I did three-thirds because I have thirds as my constant denominator, and three-thirds is one. So Anatoly spent 100%, or one whole amount of what he has. Okay. Pam spent two-thirds as much as Anatoly did. So we have that same amount, but it's only two-thirds of that amount. And then Eli, we saw that we can't fit everything that Eli spent into one diagram, so we had to put a second that is the same size, but he's filling up five of those um, sections. So we can see that Pam spent the least, and Eli spent the most. To solve this problem, we didn't even need to use an algorithm. We just drew a quick picture and went from there. Sometimes you're going to encounter problems where it gives you the fraction and you don't know the starting quantity. And that's okay. Um, think about how you can draw the picture and go from there.